West Ham Network, it's Holly. I hope you're all well. I am here with your three Hammers headlines for today, running association with KUMB.com. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of June. Where is the year going? Where is the sunshine? That's the main question. But today we are going to be running through a team potentially eyeing up Jared Bowen, yesterday's Euros performance from two different Hammers and an inquiry about Danny Ings. Let's get started. <laughs> For your first story, David Ornstein has reported that Newcastle could be interested in gaining Dave, David Bowen, <laughs> Jared Bowen's signature as they look to strengthen their right wing. So his daily column suggested that a move for Bowen could be on the cards. However, not actually going to be as their first choice. So this is because he said that Eddie Howe is going to be targeting Michael Elise as the first choice. But if that move doesn't go ahead then Bowen is likely to become a target. So I'd like to think there's very little in this story. Bowen as second choice, no official move or discussions yet. Bowen being committed long-term to his future at West Ham, it makes it quite a difficult link. Then given Bowen's form for us and the fact that we want to be competing with Newcastle would make this an incredibly expensive move for the Toons. So not one that I'm overly concerned about until we actually hear anything official about anything progressing here. But you worry we could lose Bowen? I don't know if it's a full sense of security but with him signing the next however many years away to West Ham, I feel like it's given me quite a sense of security that I really don't think he'd leave. And if he was going to, it'd have to be for a huge, huge offer. Um, and he is a player that can change games for teams, but I'd like to think that they'd be going for, for different players if they were going to spend that amount of money, maybe. Um, but yeah, personally, I'm feeling pretty confident that he's going to stay long term. So I'm not too worried about this one. Don't worry, Hammers. For your second story, the Czech duo, Suchek and Sufal, they both played at full 90 for their first game of the Euros, actually, last night. Unfortunately, losing 2-1 to Portugal after a very good start. Suchek did captain the side, so that's good, as usual. Um, and he got four tackles, he got four clearances, and he got 25 passes in. Well, Sufal, he went and got the assist, didn't he, for the opening goal for the Czech Republic. Nice assist, same kind of assist that we've seen where he whips it into the box, um, gets someone on the end of it that we see a lot of the time at West Ham. But if you haven't already, give this morning's video a watch because we actually discussed Sufal's future and we asked your thoughts on what we should do about the right-back position. Should he stay? Should he go? Should we look to strengthen him? Links to Wan-Bissaka and whether that would be an upgrade, whether we should bring in youth and maybe switch the two of them so that they Sufal has a little bit less game time so he can recover and hopefully keep his pace up, bed a youngster in, then kind of switch it so that the youngster gets to play more and Sufal sort of slowly eases out. Um, so there's a lot of different options when it comes to Sufal. Personally, I don't want him to go yet. I understand what people are saying, that we should be ambitious and we should be looking to really bring in youth and bring in players that are going to be with us long term. But Sufal does a job and I think we've got enough priority positions and not a huge amount of money to spend on those positions. So to sell Sufal, who's currently working pretty well for us, like, yes, he's not the absolute dream player at right back, but he is doing a job. To sell him, for me, feels like a massive risk because it just adds someone else that we've got to bring in. And it's not just the finding of somebody. It's the fact that Sufal would not go for as much money as the person we need to bring in. Financial fair play wise, it's going to make things a lot more difficult. And I'm concerned that we'll be spreading ourselves too thin and trying to get like nine, ten players in um, when this isn't probably someone we need to bring in because we already need to strengthen the right back position, even with him there. Uh, so, yeah, personally, I don't want him to go because I'm a little bit scared. And finally, Southampton have inquired about Danny Ings. So he's currently a West Ham player until 2025, I believe, having scored one goal in 30 appearances across all competitions for us. Not great as a striker, but in, in the most recent season, he started only seven matches and this doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. So Southampton are said to be happy to offer up to £6 million. So some money to be recovered there. But Ings is reportedly, you know, just wanting to suss out all those options and work out who he could go to, who would be after him. And yeah, just assess those options before making any decisions this summer and jumping at the first opportunity. But that said, 
Ings definitely must have a soft spot for Southampton. He had a really, really successful first spell with them. Um, he actually scored 46 goals in 100 appearances between 2019 and 2021, something which there's no way he doesn't remember that fondly. So I'm sure that he uh, is liked by the fans and would potentially like to go back, even if he's a little bit older now. Um, and then given that we paid £15 million pounds for him back in January 2023, Ings would join a really long list of strikers that we've lost money on after an unsuccessful spell at West Ham. I actually did a video on this earlier in the year, maybe even last year, where we spoke about the different players that we've brought in as strikers, the hopes that we've had for them all, the the track records that they've had, um, and then how we've, we've paid a certain sum for them. I've struggled to get the best out of them or struggle to get the best out of them and then not use them or like Ings, like seven starts. We're not using these players that we're bringing in Lo and behold, they don't perform well. And then we struggle to sell them unless we sell them for a loss. Um, I can't remember how many it was now, but there is a lot of strikers that we basically brought in, kind of made their career just fall apart a little bit by not really using them, not really making them look valuable in any way whatsoever, not getting the best out of them and then having to sell them for a massive, massive sort of... Uh, drop in money compared to what we actually paid for them which is a shame because again touching on financial fair play you need to be able to <laughs> recoup as much money as possible so you can spend it again and the problem that we've got is where you're just dropping what do we say 15 million and 6 million so like you're losing 9 million on inks fine but you do that over three or four players and you've got a 40 million pound player that you could have purchase that you've literally like gone into thin air that money so it does all have a knock-on impact and it's not just this window it's the years to come that the financial fair play side stuff is calculated so it is going to be an interesting one um to see what happens do you think we should just cut ties now though that's what i want to know in the comments so do you think we should cut ties now and get what we can for ings because it doesn't look like his value is going to be going up odds on lopetegi coming in and really wanting to give him a go i can't really see it um even if it's for just six million do you think we should get what we can and run let us know below in those comments so there we go those have been your hammers headlines for today thank you so much as always for watching if you're new around here hit that subscribe button and whether you're new to the channel or you've seen us a million times give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and turn those notifications on so you'll be notified every single time we put a video out so you never ever 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 have to miss one lucky you <laughs> Have a brilliant day and until next time, I've been Holly, come on you irons. Irons. <laughs>